Good evening. Good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you, Ray. Thank you, sir. A few more minutes here and we'll get started. p.m. and we are right on time. Welcome everyone to uh, Minority Real Estate Millionaires. I am your host with the most, Mr. Ray, and I'm here to tell you a little bit today about wealth distribution. So we've been on this journey uh, for the last four weeks and um, I want to I'm going to end up this journey today in what I am calling wealth distribution, wealth distribution. As usual, uh, BLM, baby, we are representing Black Lives Matter. We believe in the fight. Uh, we are on the field. We are making progress. So let's continue to stay vigilant, my brothers and sisters. Um, what Dr. King said and done in years past is still ringing true today. We must fight for freedom. We must fight for justice. We must fight for peace. So we stand united. All right, ground rules are as we have done in the past. I'm gonna make sure everybody's muted uh, during the call. We're gonna allow you to conversate through the chat and uh, please provide your feedback to me um, how we can make this better. So Rayism, let's get out there. Let's start the Rayism. Uh, today, we're talking about money as, uh, as a means. But at the end of the day, money can't buy happiness. But on the flip side of that, <laughs> neither can poverty. Um, I think for me, that speaks to the to the fact that, yeah, money is not everything, but being poor is not one of the things that I want to aspire to do anyway. So uh, money is just one of those things I've said before that makes life easier. Uh, it's the lubricant to life. It helps you to be able to help others and help your family and yourself. So while you shouldn't put all your emphasis and all your effort into making money, money should be one of the things that you should be attracting to yourself by your thoughts, by your habits, by your actions. Because while it may not buy you happiness, it will make sure you don't be in poverty. So that's your rayism for today, big baby. Leo Roston, thank him for that. So let's go on into our lesson for today, the four stages of wealth. So we've already talked about wealth education and just as a quick review there, I talked about how you should be educating yourself, getting yourself up to speed on things uh, surrounding building and accumulating wealth. How do you do that? For, for us, it's with real estate. For you, it may be something else, but whatever it is, your field of study, whatever it is that you can do better than anybody else on this planet, study on that thing, educate yourself, and make sure that you are the best at what you do. And then at that point, after you have educated yourself, as we're talking about real estate, now it's time to start accumulating some real estate. Let's get out there and buying. Let's get out there using banks' money, leveraging uh, the money that the banks are going to allow you to buy real estate properties and that people are willing to pay uh, your mortgage to live in those properties. So you want to get as much property as you can, especially when you're young, especially as the banks are giving away this money. Make sure you're getting as much as much assets under control as you can. 
And then last week we talked about wealth protection, how you gotta be able to, to protect your wealth, make sure you got your property titled correctly, make sure you have a will in place, make sure you have insurance in place, make sure you have all those things in place that you have, um, you, you've accumulated all this wealth and there's no sense in you allow it just to slip through your hands and you and for it to be taken away because you didn't have the proper insurance or because you didn't have the proper uh, protocols in place to protect it uh, by making sure you had a will, a trust and those type of things. So it was all about wealth protection. And today we're gonna to talk about lastly is wealth distribution. Wealth distribution and uh, wealth distribution just simply has to do with at some point in your life, hopefully we're talking about we're trying to make millionaires, right? Hopefully at some point when you get your millions, you, you, you will feel like uh, you might have a responsibility to help somebody else, to share with somebody else, or maybe even to share with your family. So today, how do you correctly and purposefully give away the wealth that you have. And you might ask, Mr. Ray, why do I want to give it away? I worked so hard for it. That's, that, yeah, that's all well and good. You have worked hard for it and you should be proud of your accomplishments. But at some point, how much is enough and how much is too much? We're growing people, we're growing, uh, I, I want to grow individuals that have so much wealth that they can use part of their wealth to help somebody else. And so that's what we're talking about today. Once you acquired it, once you protected it, at some point in your stage in life, as you get older, there'll be an opportunity uh, for you to give some of that wealth away. So today our agenda, um, we're gonna be talking about this whole idea around wealth distribution. The first, the first thing that we're gonna talk about is sharing our wealth with others while we're alive. And so there's a biblical basis for that. And in, in Proverbs, it says that he that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. So one of the things as we're alive, we are to help others that are less fortunate than ourselves. The other piece of our agenda today is, is that you ought to be leaving a legacy uh, or inheritance for your children. That's Bible. That's biblical because the Bible says in Proverbs that a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Did you did you see what it said there? It's talking about generation, and not just your children, but your children's children. That's what we're talking about. Wealth distribution, sharing with what you have while you're alive, and then when you pass to be able to have that inheritance to uh, transfer to your heirs so they can continue to transfer that to their heirs after you've been long gone. Why give it away, Mr. Ray? I, I don't want to give it away. I want to keep it all to myself. I work hard for this money. Why can't I keep it? Well, for one, uh, you can't take it with you, big baby. The Bible says, for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain. Did you see that? It's certain we're not going to carry anything out with us. Because Job declared very clearly that naked I came from my mother's womb. And guess what? Naked shall I return. So you're not going to be able to take it with you. So you might as well prepare to give it away. This guy right here said, no, baby, I'm taking mine with me. I'm putting it with me, put it in the grave with me. I want my stuff. It's not going to happen like that. It's not going to happen like that. Quick story. There was a story of a, a guy. He had uh, three friends, and they made a pack, and they said, the guy said, I'm going to give each one of you $10,000, and when I die, I want you to put that $10,000 uh, in the casket, and so it can be buried with me. So lo and behold, one day, old boy died. And uh, so his friends, all three of them, 
they went to the funeral and the first one went up there. He viewed the body and he put his, his $10,000 cash into the casket. The, uh, the next guy came by, his buddy, he put his money in there. And then the next guy put his, his money in there. And then later on, after they were uh, talking about, hey, man, did you do what you, what you said you was going to do to old boy? And the first guy said, yeah, I did, man. I gave him 10000 cash. The second guy said, yeah. I gave him 10,000 cash too. And the other brother said, yeah, I wrote him a check for 10,000 because I figured he can cash it when he get to heaven. So be careful what kind of deals you make. He did solidify and get old boy 10,000, but he wrote him a check because he figured he wasn't going to be able to cash it. But the moral of that story is you can't take it with you. You can't take it with you. So you might as well figure out how to give it away. So first things first, I want, I want to talk about uh, this whole idea of how do you give it away, when do you give it away, and things like that. So let's, let's get into it. You know, when, when I think about giving away money, I'm at a point in my life right now that retired, enjoying the, ben the fruits of my wealth, the last 20 years of buying property, managing property. It's, it's very... It's very pleasing for me to be able to give money away with a purpose. Now, I'm very strategic about how I give it away, but my goal is to give it away. You know, creating wealth and, and building opportunities for me is very rewarding, and that's how I give it away. I give it away in, in, in the knowledge that I'm sharing and, 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 and the, the benefits that people will get when they execute and implement the things that I'm sharing. That's, that's very rewarding to me. And sharing your wealth with others that are less fortunate is very fulfilling. I mean, it's the best feeling in the world knowing that you help somebody that wasn't going to be able to maybe eat today, or you help uh, clothe somebody, or you help somebody with some, with some housing, just whatever that you can help somebody in, it's always very, very fulfilling. And then setting up your children for success with your wealth. Oh, how satisfying that can be. And then creating this legacy of wealth for future, future gen generations is very gratifying. So these are the things, and this is the heart, and this is the desire that you have to have. You cannot be a hoarder and say, oh, what am I going to do with all this money? Give it away, but give it away strategically, and it'll bring you joy, and you'll be very fulfilled when you do that. Uh, continuing on, I mean, before you can give money away, though, again, you got to have your own house in order, right? Now, if you don't have it, you definitely can't give it away. So it's very incumbent upon you to have your house in order, right? Make sure as you're accumulating this, this wealth, uh, after you've accumulated, you use the bank money, start paying some of that down, right? Pay some of that, 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 uh, that debt down so that you have some of your properties that are free and clear, that you always have assets that you can sell and you can clearly uh, receive that money without having to have that debt uh, being net against what you're trying to take out of it. So always have low or no debt. I like the fact that uh, I, I can have a primary residence free and clear of any debt. Right, because if something happens and the market falls or everything, I get sued. At least I got somewhere to live, right? Free and clear, I have somewhere to live. Also, make sure you got your emergency funds in place. I always say if you can have three months uh, emergency fund, if you're if, if all your bills add up to a thousand dollars a month and you should have at least three thousand dollars put somewhere I, I like to have six months really six months worth of emergency funds and so when something happens like covid 19 right and you don't have a job and everything is shut down where do you go well you need to have some money already put in place some liquid cash money that you can go get so you got to have take care of these things first before you ever start thinking about start giving away some of your money. Make sure you got your retirement 
funds in place and all your retirements, how much are you contributing? How much are, how much are you putting towards your real estate uh, portfolio? And where do you want that to grow in the years? So make sure that you are thinking about retirement. Too often as young people, and when we're young, we never think about retirement. We just think, oh, uh, I, I'll take care of it when I get there. No, you gotta be strategic. You gotta be methodical. You gotta be intentional about building uh, a retirement uh, for yourself and for your family. Also, first things first, you got to make sure, we talked about this last week, make sure you got the appropriate insurance and that you have the, your trust funds in place for how you want those funds to be distributed uh, at your death. So where do I start, Mr. Ray? I don't, I don't know where to start on this deal. How, how, can, how can we get started? Remember I said there's two things, you wanna give it away while you're living and you wanna give it away uh, when you die because you can't take it with you. So right now while you're living, some of the things you can do, contribute to your local church. If there's a local church that you attend, that's feeding you, that's providing a place where you're hearing the word of God and you're growing and developing, you should be supporting that local church right there's there's local charities and and there's foundations that that are out there doing some good things for people find one and start contributing to them and you don't have to do a lot just do what you can and help and that that builds uh, um, that, that builds repetition for you and when you start doing it then you'll you'll continue doing it because you now are in the habit of doing this so get in the habit of sharing your wealth. You can meet the uh, needs in your local community. There's all kinds of needs in our, in our, in our local com communities that we can get involved in, that we can help people with. Extend your charity even beyond the local and, and get to, and there's some national initiatives out there. But I always tell anybody, before you give a dime to anything, you make sure that you do your due diligence and you check out the organizations that you give. You want to make sure that they are doing uh, what they tell you uh, they are doing. So just, just, just find a charity that you believe in, one that you think is really doing a good job, and share with them. Make sure they're legitimate. Make sure they're a reputable charity, and so that you can make sure that those funds are getting to the place that they're not eating it up with overhead, with expenses, with staff members and things like that, right? And just to, you can determine, hey, if you give it to a certain organization, say you want it toward this certain thing within the organization, make sure that you designate that. You know, a lot of people give the United Way at their job and you can designate certain agencies that you want uh, to give to. So make sure you spend some time and then thinking about how you want your money to be used. And then just verify just to make sure that they have the 5013C designation that way uh, on your taxes uh, that you can uh, write those expenses off. And just verify that they got good leadership. So when we talk about due diligence, we just saying do your homework. Don't just frivolously throw your money out there to any and everybody. Do your homework and make sure that these are legitimate um, charities out here that are doing legitimate work. Ah, uh, giving it away, preparing your children. And so I, I got to admit to you, this this is one area uh, that I failed in. And the reason I failed in is because I didn't know any better. Nobody ever taught me how to prepare. My mom and my dad didn't, didn't teach me anything uh, around how to manage money, how to budget, you know, how to get into real estate. They, they didn't know anything about any of that. So how could they teach me, right? And so even as a college graduate, uh, I was not... I was not in the mindset that I really needed to teach my, my children. I mean, well, they had a little piggy bank, you know, and I had them start a little savings, but I waited too late to really start telling them about this real estate game, right? And so at some point as they got older, they wasn't interested. They, now they interested in that, if, you know, if you were gonna give me some money, I'll take your money, but they're not interested in, you know, dealing with landlord, I mean, dealing with tenants and, maintenance issues and, and all that kind of stuff. So I was not able to 
to get them prepared for it. But what I am in my trust going to do is make sure that it's distributed and so that they don't have, since I know for a fact that they have no interest in real estate. So in my trust, what's going to happen is uh, the, the real estate will be sold. The proceeds from those real estate will be, will be distributed as I have designated them to be distributed to who in my family I want it to be distributed to. I would have much rather been able to just hand these, these houses off to one of my children and just say, hey, you manage it. You take care of these properties. And yet then you hand them down to your children's children, but they have no desire to be desire to be a part of that. So uh, you have to be careful in that. Don't give them something that's going to make them not successful, right? If you just give them some, they already told me, hey, dad, we're not interested in real estate. So I have to make sure that I pass it to them in another form. So when you're preparing your children, you got to teach them the value of money and how to handle their finances. Because as you're teaching them, you're preparing them, hopefully, to receive the wealth that you're going to be creating for them, right? You want to uh, make sure that you're creating opportunities for them to be involved in your business. I wish I had gotten my girls involved in my business early on. Uh, maybe we would have had an opportunity for them to take a liking to what I was doing. I mean, start a savings account for them, allow them to contribute to them, show them how to set up a budget, teach them the value of money and, you know, how, how to, when you go grocery shopping, how, how you prepare, you know, the, they, they don't understand any of those things unless you teach them. Don't give them money, make them work for the money. You know, the old adage that don't give them a fish, teach them how to fish. That's what you want to do here. You want to teach your children how to fish. You're preparing a foundation for them to receive the wealth that you're building right now as you're, as you're uh, getting all this real estate and you're becoming a minority real estate millionaire. There's all kind of teaching moments every day. Don't do as I did. Don't wait till it's too late. Teach them now. Teach them the importance of handling money properly and teach them how to grow their money. Uh, now we, you, you're talking about debt, right? And I talked about this uh, a little bit last week, uh, but you got to have your, your house in order because if not, the probate court will be coming to see you. And the probate court is coming uh, to take your money and distribute it how they want to. That's why you got to have things in place that at your death, things are going to happen according to what you say they should. So my final thoughts on all our discussion today is at a minimum, at a minimum, make sure that you at least have a will in place, right? A last will and testament that says something happens to me uh, in my premature death, something happens, this is what I want to happen to the things that I own. Because uh, you saw the guy with the hers, you ain't, you ain't taking it with you, baby. You might as well prepare to give it away. Set up a living trust. Ensure that your assets transfer to those that you want. And be sure all your assets are correctly titled and the names that you want them titled in and that you have named beneficiaries so you can make sure that it passes to the people that you want to have it. And then name a trusted family member to be your executor of your estate. Again, if you're married, your spouse will be the executor. If not, then make sure you choose someone in your family that's dependable, someone that you know is going to do the right thing and make them the executor of your estate. So there's this giving pledge. And this giving pledge was put together by a group of billionaires. Now, the billionaires was Warren Buffett, Bill, and Melinda Gates. And they put together this campaign. And basically what they said, they invited wealthy people, billionaires like themselves, to sign a document that they're going to pledge at least, at a minimum, half of their wealth to give it away for philanthropic causes, right? They're going to give their money away and make a difference in this world. 
the numbers are astounding. They got 200 people signed up over 23 countries, and, and uh, most of them are billionaires. And the total pledge to date is 1.2 trillion that they're giving away. So what these billionaires have figured out, they can't spend it all. And they figured out that the best thing for them to do is to give it away so they can have a, a major impact on the lives of the people that surround them. Now, a lot of billionaires are not giving it away, but these billionaires, they have figured out that the money that they make is too much for them to spend, right? They can't even keep track of it. it's so much money. So the best thing for them to do is to give it away. And that's what I want to be. I want to be one of the guys, one of the billionaires. This is my goal. Be one of the billionaires that I can be on this pledge that I can give away half of my income also. So we're going to wrap this up. The goal around wealth distribution is that you strategically distribute your wealth while you're alive and you strategically distribute your wealth when you die. That's the goal of wealth distribution. Let's get out there and make that money, baby. Let's open it up. Questions, comments, concerns. Helpful, not helpful. Money can't buy happiness, baby, but neither can poverty. Guys are gonna be quiet today on me. I know some of this information, uh, I know it's a lot. I may be fire hosing <laughs> some of you guys, but you thinking, man, I, I never even thought about this. That's good, you never thought about it. Now's a good time to think about it and to implement the things that you need to do to make sure that if something happens, and even while you're alive, you should be giving away, but if something happens, that you can make sure that that money flows to your heirs. A lot of times in our communities, that's not the case. Hey, Ray. Yes. Uh, one week you talked a little bit about the LLC. Yeah. You did. I don't know. Did you mention about how does an LLC flow through the trust or? Yeah, I did. That, how does that? I didn't. I missed that. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need you to go look at that video. Good. Did you, <laughs> well, basically, and when you set up an LLC, yes, uh, it, we talked about number one thing is it shields uh, you from liability so they can't come after your personal uh, stuff. But the second thing it does is that any monies that you make or any losses that you take flow directly through to your 1031 on your personal income. So those are the two things around the LLC. And, and the basis for the LLC is to shield you to make sure that if you're sued, that only the things in the LLC that they can get and not your personal property. Okay. So you do the LLC and the trust. Yes. Because you know, what happens, so what happens, the trust, the trust goes into effect when I die, when, it, before I die, the trust is just sitting there waiting for things to happen. When I die, my LLC rolls into the trust, all my personal property rolls, everything that I have rolls to the trust. And now the, 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 uh, the guidelines in the trust determines what happens to those houses, to my, uh, my, my house, to my income, what happens to my pension, my retirement, everything is lined out in that trust says, the day he dies, this is what he wants to do with all his money. Okay. Even everything that's in the LLC. Okay, I got it. What else, anybody got anything else? All right, well, it sounds like you guys are ready to give it away. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. The goal is to make it, baby, then give it away. Is someone saying something? Sorry, if we don't get any comments here soon, we're going to end this conversation. Oh, 
And if I don't hear any questions here, I got a couple of things I want to bring you up to speed on. A few more minutes for questions. All right, hearing no more questions. So uh, this was the last in my series. And so now we're looking forward to start uh, our new foundations class and our, and our, um, uh, our advanced class will be starting in October. So for the next week or two, I may have a few uh, things that I want to share, but for the most part over the next two weeks, I'm going to be preparing my content for those two classes because I'll be conducting two classes a day. So I'm going to need to be working on my, uh, my input, on my PowerPoint presentation. So I'll make sure I'm ready for you guys so I can give you some quality uh, information. So that starts in October. Uh, it's going to be $30 a month. Uh, you can send that directly to me on October 1st. Uh, either uh, you can send that on my uh, Cash App or to my PayPal account. Um, so, uh, uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm not in the money chasing business. So if you signed up, you need to make sure you got it to me on October one, you know, I'm a landlord. If you don't have it in, it might be late penalties, baby. But now if you don't have it in, I'm not going to chase you down. I mean, you want to be a part of this, you want to come along for the ride. then uh, that's the cost of doing business. And, uh, I think it's a reasonable amount. Uh, if it's not, again, if you, you get into it, you want your money back, I'll give it back and stop at any time. Hey, if it's not helping you, then it's not going to help me either. So there we go. That was my public service announcement. Any questions on that? Uh, again, if you sign up for the advanced, you get the foundation class and the advanced. If you sign up for the foundations, that's what you'll get, the foundation class. So everybody that's been with me over the last few months is going to automatically get the uh, foundations class and the advanced class. All my new participants that are gonna be coming along are gonna be uh, just only in the foundation. So I expect that I'll have uh, probably 12 to 15 uh, in each class, because I assume uh, that some of my uh, advanced people are still gonna wanna go back and, uh, and listen to what I got to say in the foundation, because this is my second pass through the foundation. So I'll be adding some additional information, some things that I've learned over the last few months. And so I'll be adding that content also. So any questions or comments on that? Good. All right, well, I'm not hearing any, any comments, uh, so. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have a class uh, deep dive on Thursday or not. I'm working on some stuff, so I'll, I'll send out an invite if I am. Um, again, I may have another a special, um, uh, some, some special things that I want to share between now and October 1st. If not, then uh, I won't be sending out anything. So, But I am excited about uh, getting started in our new foundations class. And then our, uh, also our advanced class. I think we're going to have some, have some good information in there, have some good conversation. So uh, let's, get it, let, let's get excited, baby. So with that being said, we are done. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.